Good morning, uh, it's Ted here. I'm in the diesel engine lab and I want to go over uh, an older EDC engine. So this dates back to the late 90s. Uh, there's still quite a few of them out there on lakes running around as well as salt water. I've got a, a specific version here. It's a 44 series four liter engine that I wanted to go over. So the first thing I want to do is to kind of a walk around just so you get a feel for the engine and see what the components are on it. I'll talk a little bit about the electrical system and how that's different. In later videos, I'll go over some of the electronics and some of the uh, circuitry and how EDC actually works. So this is pre-CAN bus. Um, this is not a D4, D6 engine. This is a single processor engine, uh, first generation. And if you're familiar with gasoline engines, think of MEFI. It's kind of like the early first generations of electronic gasoline engines. So let's take a look. So here's the engine. This is a 44 EDC engine. Uh, KAMD stands for Compressor After Cooled Marine Diesel Engine. So TAMD would be Turbocharged After Cooled Marine Diesel Engines. This engine is a six cylinder engine. It has both the tags on it for four and uh, three liters and four liters. So the 32 series would be. Uh, similar to this except the four cylinder. So this still is a mechanical injection system. It just has an EDC processor on it. It has a belt driven compressor and it has electromagnetic clutch just like the air conditioner in a car. Um, one thing about the compressors is to remember that they do have a uh, reservoir for oil in them and if that is not changed then the compressor prematurely fails. So drain and fill. It takes a very specific type of 80 weight oil which you should buy from your Volvo Penna dealer. We're coming around here onto the port side, and now you see your uh, electronically controlled um, injection pump. So this is a standard rotary style injection pump that has been controlled with a solenoid instead of a, a lever. So there is no stop lever, there is no throttle lever. It's done electronically through a solenoid. There's also um, another sensor in here, there's a um, position sensor, uh, that actuator, so it knows if the actual linkage inside is moving. That's a feedback loop. You have your return line, and then your two connections up here are your EDC connections. These go to your control system and your helm controls, and we'll go over that in a little while. In the next video, probably. Uh, fuel filter, oil filter. Up on the top of the oil filter, you got a couple of sending units. We'll go over that, temperature and pressure. Um, down here, it's still a mechanical engine. Here's your mechanical lift pump. Okay, fuel line in. Um, and then your ID tag back there. If you're ever looking for the real information, that's where the ID tag is. And then your connections to the starter, which is very important. So we have your power feed from your battery cable and your negative cable that goes to the starter. This is a true isolated engine. So this engine is an isolated engine unless you stop the engine. And I'll go over that again in a later video. Here are the two con connections that are gonna be tying into the EDC engine. Um, you have down here, you've got your main fuse going up to the EDC platform, right water inlet. Um, and then back around the back side of the engine, you have where you time the engine. This one doesn't have a gear or a drive on it, which is nice so we can see the actual, um, up on the top of the flywheel housing is where your speed sensor is. And that reads off the flywheel. So, you know, being it's an open flywheel, if it does have any type of corrosion in there, then that corrosion can, it's a mag pickup, and it can cause that speed sensor to act up. So that's another thing to look at. Uh, your turbocharger in the back, okay, it's a regular antifreeze cooled turbocharger. Um, you have a, an air bleed here that runs up to the coolant system, two air bleeds on the, on the reservoir for your antifreeze. That allows, when you're filling it up, allows the air to escape and go back to the reservoir. Um, from the turbocharger, this is the air coming out of the turbocharger going into your after cooler which will then go into the intake manifold. So if we back up from the air coming into the turbocharger, there's a diverter valve in here. So this is your air filter housing. Air comes into the air filter housing and then it can either go underneath and up to the blower in the front, 
okay? And then comes through this sound resonator. Looks kind of like an, a car's exhaust. And that goes to the diverter valve. So the diverter valve is normally in this position. If the turbocharger starts to spool up and it starts to pull more air than the blower will create, then it will pull that door open and it will bypass the blower. Now, remember, this is an EDC engine. So being an EDC engine, the processor controls when the clutch gets engaged. And we'll go over that circuitry in the future. So um, just to give you a walkthrough, you know, your heat exchanger over here, um, just to look at some of that information of how this is laid out. All right, so this is part one of the EDC series. I'll start working on this um, for you guys out there that have these engines that are interested in uh, working on them. And I'll see you in the next one.